everyone, and welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations. My name is Peggy Ployer, and I am the founder and CEO, as well as the um, the host of this broadcast, Empowering Homeschool Conversations. We at Sped Homeschool empower families to home educate children with learning challenges, and I encourage you to check out our website at spedhomeschool.com to learn more about the resources and the support that we offer families. Um, so today we are actually wrapping up a monthly theme. Every month we, we focus on a different theme and this month we've been focusing on school choice, but maybe from some different perspectives that you haven't thought about school choice and really some ways that school choice can affect and enhance how you teach a struggling learner. And I'm excited today to have my guest, Alona Cortez. Welcome, Alona, and thank you for joining us to talk about freedom and flexibility in homeschool scheduling. Thank you, Katie. It's great to be here. Yeah, I, I'm excited because a lot of times when we think about school choice and freedom and flexibility, we, we just think we have the freedom to choose the school. A lot of times we don't think about the freedom to choose what we do when we make that choice as well. And so um, I was talking with Alona, and I think we met maybe like three weeks ago, um, and and she started talking about how much the, the schedule and flexibility within the schedule of homeschooling can really help a struggling learner. And I thought, we have got to talk about this. <laughs> on our show. So I'm so super excited to have you here today and and to talk about this because I know it's something you're passionate about. Um, but I would just love for you to start out by telling us a little bit about you and your homeschooling story and what you're working on to help homeschoolers with struggling learners, especially in this area of scheduling and helping parents. All right. Um, so I am a mother of three. My kids are six, eight, and 10, almost 11, as my oldest will definitely tell you. Which is very <laughs> um, and I started homeschooling when officially, when my oldest was in kindergarten, um, but mm. it wasn't really always the plan. I, I grew up going to public school and yep. I loved it and I did well in public school and I enjoyed it so much that I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, so I would mm. never have to leave school. <laughs> and, um, and then I grew up and I started my teacher education program and started mm. doing some like field experience and seeing more of the behind the scenes stuff that as a kid, you don't see that. Um, right. You just see your teacher teaching the class and you know, mm -hmm. everyone, everyone has to listen to her when it gets free. And, um, <laughs> and every, everyone's learning, you know, mm -hmm. so, or at least from my perspective as a kid, everyone's learning. <laughs> and then you, you grow up and you're like, wait, not everyone learns the same way. And, right. Um, yeah. You know, not everyone enjoys school. Not everyone's experience mm. with school is positive. And right. I, I started doing uh, my student teaching and <clears throat> the teacher I was working with, she, it was the first couple weeks of school and she just, there was one student she just did not like. And hmm. this was first grade, like little six-year-olds, like Aww. my youngest is six. Mm -hmm. And and she's so, so sensitive. And I can see like uh, where kids that age, they're so sensitive to the attitude someone has towards them, even when it's subtle. Right. But I remember this teacher just, the, there was a, an incident where a child had gotten in trouble in the hallways and mm. um, the janitor had thought that it was this boy that she doesn't like. <laughs> and mm. um, so they like talked about it and stuff. And afterwards it came out that it wasn't him. It was some other kid that was mm. getting in trouble. And she had said she had hoped that it was him so that he would be punished. And I, I, I thought, how sad. And mm -hmm. the, the, since it was the beginning, it was the beginning of the year too. It's not like this kid had- Right, the child was set up to fail from the yeah. beginning. Mm -hmm. And he, they did this little activity where one of the questions they said, what's one thing you want your teacher to know about you? And he said that he wrote, 
um, that I am good. And I was like, how sad this poor child. And he, he was a, a hardworking kid. He always like finished mm-hmm. his schoolwork and he would get, his issue was maybe he would get bored and oh, he, yeah. he wasn't redirected appropriately. Mm-hmm. And that was at that time, my oldest was three and mm-hmm. my youngest wasn't even born yet. <laughs> and, um, my, my middle child was just turning one and I thought I can't send my kids mm-hmm. to a school mm-hmm. where they're going to be treated like that just because someone, a previous teacher said they, they were a problem child. Right. And yeah. Especially when your child is three, that's when a lot of problems <laughs> start to show up. So right. Exactly. Being like, okay. <laughs> she might have some issues with mm-hmm. behavior later on. And, and you don't know at that time, are they, is it a phase? Are you going to grow out of it? Are you going right. to figure it out? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so I decided then, but when my oldest daughter turned five, I was in the middle of getting a divorce and mm. their biological father is no longer around them anymore. Mm-hmm. And it was so hard trying to take care of these three very small children yeah. so I would I was thinking I'll send my oldest to school it'll lighten my load during the day and mm-hmm. she will get the education that she needs but mm-hmm. I knew she had some difficulties already because I had mm-hmm. been doing like preschool and that kind of stuff with her right. and she caught on to some things but her language still she was struggling a lot with her language um, so I go to orientation, tell the teacher, look, you have to look right at her when you're talking to her. She can't do well with, she doesn't do well with background noise and things like that. Mm-hmm. And the teacher goes, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll deal with it. Six weeks into the school year, mm-hmm. nothing had been addressed and she wow. was falling behind very quickly and it was full day kindergarten. And for a kid who oh, had wow. never been in preschool. That's huge. Day hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the first day she went to school, she came home. She got off the bus and she said, Mommy, I missed you all day. I promise I'm never going to school again. And I was like, Aww. actually, you're going again tomorrow. <laughs> and, and but she, you know, people said, she'll adjust. She'll get you to Even after six weeks, she still was miserable hated it Hmm. she's getting in trouble at school because she talked to the kids next to her she's very sociable she loves Mm -hmm. other kids or you know well now we're facing preteens so that's questionable but (laughs) (laughs) she she loved being around other kids Mm -hmm. and um you know to see her feeling discouraged and like she's getting in trouble she wasn't picking up on the material and things like that so I just went up to the school and I said I'm withdrawing her (laughs) and they're like whoa why what's going on what happened and I said I just went up to the school Mm -hmm. you don't have to give a reason right right Mm -hmm. it's not working for your child that's enough of a reason or even it could be working for your child Mm -hmm. and you just feel a conviction or you just personally want to do it I love that you point that out. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and go with that gut feeling because it, it's amazing um, where that will take you. Um, Yeah. Well, that's an awesome story. Um, Natalie is watching on Facebook and she says, hello, ladies. Hi, Natalie. Thanks for joining us. And if you are joining us on Facebook or YouTube, we're broadcasting live on both of those. We would love to have you part of our conversation. So feel free to put comments in the feed on either place and we'll see them. We'd like to um, to incorporate them in with our um, with what we're talking about. Um, but I'm going to bring up your slides, Alona, and um, and kind of the end of my question, I'd love for you to talk about this Pillars of Peace Primary Partners, which is at the very beginning of your slides, as to what you're you're working on right now uh, for homeschoolers. Yeah, so I started homeschooling my daughter, and I had always had a very positive uh, view of homeschooled uh, kids and families, 
Mm -hmm. And I just always had this idea that homeschooled kids always excel at everything. Mm. And that wasn't the case for us. (laughs) It was a (laughs) huge struggle. (laughs) And um, we, uh, even with my teaching background, like uh, I had, I had done all the coursework and stuff for, I didn't have my certification yet, but I had a lot of background in education and right. even, even in high school, I took electives like childhood development and anything mm. like that. So since I was a kid, I've been, that's been my focus. Like how do people learn? Right. Even yeah. um, I took classes on, um, sorry, excuse me. It's okay. <laughs> a little bit of a cough here. <laughs> I took um, classes on uh, like dyslexia and (laughs) so you had you had a lot of (laughs) previous interest in in a lot of those things which kind of pointed you in that direction too Um, I'm gonna um, put up a comment here and we have another viewer um, from watching on YouTube Pug Life says hi from Portland Maine thanks for watching us Um, yeah I'm coming from Florida this this week. Normally, I broadcast from from Houston, Texas, but as you can see, I'm in my RV right now, <laughs> broadcasting from uh, Jacksonville Beach. So um, so we're we're kind of all over the place. But all right. So hopefully your cough is mitigated now, and we'll continue on. <laughs> <laughs> so we um we we found ourselves struggling a lot with the homeschooling. And mm. I ended up getting my master's degree in special education because of how much my own children were struggling. And I realized that we weren't the only family dealing with that kind of issue. Mm. Where actually, on the contrary, a lot of people were pulling their kids out because the, the school system wasn't working for them and Mm -hmm. their children's special needs. Yeah. So um, what would happen uh, from what I would see with other parents, they would pull their kids out, they would try to homeschool them, and they would become very, very frustrated Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. very discouraged because their, you know, their their kids are struggling. And that's that's a challenge even for professional Mm -hmm. Teachers. Exactly. That is so good to point out because I think we as parents beat ourselves up way too much about that. Yeah. And I I know that was something that I, I felt a lot of guilt for. Like, why isn't my child on grade level? Why isn't mm-hmm. my child learning how to read? And mm-hmm. it, it turned out like I knew um she had some, she had a, a variety of issues with uh, <laughs> dyslexia, auditory processing, mm-hmm. visual tracking. And then we also found out that my older two uh, had some retained primitive reflexes. Mm-hmm. Actually, all their primitive reflexes were retained, which I didn't even know was a thing. Uh, I've never heard yeah, of uh-huh. <laughs> um, you'll find a lot of that on our website if you want to find out more about all those those things. But yes, I didn't know that when I first started homeschooling 19 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's just not something people really talk about, mm-hmm. um, and and it's shocking because of how profoundly it can affect yes. a child, especially when you see things like um, attention issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, which is something my, my middle daughter struggles with a lot, with the attention. Mm-hmm. Um, I, cause I thought uh, with my middle daughter, she doesn't have the same language difficulties that my oldest has. Mm-hmm. So I thought teaching her how to read is going to be a breeze. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm yeah. You know that. what? That we do that way too often. We just go, well, if it's not the kids, it's got to be me. And oh, what a mistake that is. Because is. yes, our kids each have different struggles. And sometimes it is us, but it's not all us. <laughs> yeah. So we had someone at our church actually say that their son, who's close to my oldest, 
um, he was struggling with attention, um, learning, mm -hmm. uh, tantrums, just behavioral problems, all kinds of issues. Right. And they had discovered this um, primitive reflex issue. So I went and got my older two tested and I came back that they had retained all of them, but the treatment was very expensive. And I was like, there's no way we can afford this. Not only that, but the time. You had to go out there three times a week and the location mm. was an hour away from us. Oh, and wow. That's I, so much time. Yeah. yeah. And, and you figure I'm homeschooling my three kids who take forever to do their schoolwork. And mm -hmm. I'm also working full time. So, yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I just couldn't see how it would be possible to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm very much a uh, do-it-yourself kind of person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if I can't afford it or whatever, I'll just go and learn how to do it myself. Mm -hmm. So I... I'm glad you're highlighting this site because this is a lot of where parents come from when they start looking at homeschool schedules and they look at how inflexible they are because they're looking at all these options of, well, I have to go to this therapy and I have to do this there. And they, they find themselves running around all the time and thinking, this isn't flexible at all. Or I'm trying to make it as flexible as I can, but you know, I have to fit in all these things. And I'm so glad that we're going to kind of move beyond this. But, but it's great for you to point out where you started at, too, because um, because there there is an ability to change this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, with working full time and everything, like you can't, it's not your traditional school day. So. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Especially trying to get in all this other, other stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we started doing the exercises at home. Like I, I bought a book, Diane Craft's book. I, I mentioned that you worked with her. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, Diane has been a mentor of mine since I started homeschooling. So yes, she is an amazing woman. So we um, we looked into the book. We started doing the exercises, but I also got them enrolled in occupational therapy mm -hmm. um, yep. because. One, kids just work harder for somebody else. They do, <laughs> yes, and that's good to point out. <laughs> as, a struggle, as a homeschooling parent, you'll see like your your kids will go to co-op and suddenly they can read when they're there. And they <laughs> right. They're like, what's happening? <laughs> mm -hmm. so, um, so it's good. They go to that once a week, but that wouldn't have been enough by itself. Um, mm -hmm. So we do the exercises at home. And even after like months, the therapists are like, wow, they're making really great progress, you know, mm -hmm. so um, it's nice also to have that third party to say, yes. hey, that, that they is are true. making mm -hmm. progress, um, yeah. and it motivates the kids as well. So with mm -hmm. Colors of Peace, we're trying to integrate those two things where, um, one, you have that third party, um, mm -hmm. someone else telling your kid, yes, you do actually have to your schoolwork right they back up mom and dad and say yep we agree with them <laughs> and um also to to help with um the consistency of doing mm -hmm. those exercises because it's so easy to just be like you know what i'm tired we have right. a goal we are busy mm -hmm. and even though the exercises don't really take a long time out of your day it's just the starting <laughs> it, it is I remember when we started doing that and I'm thinking oh my goodness so switching tracks you know for someone like myself who does have autism as well as my kids switching tracks is difficult from every perspective in our family and so I didn't want to switch tracks they didn't but when we have it with somebody else that we're accountable to it happens more often and I I totally agree with that <laughs> yeah so, yeah so, so I'm excited about you know this this um, program that you're pulling together because I, I and as I was telling Alona when she she introduced it to me I'm like this is filling a need that we have had for a long time in our community yeah so I'm super excited yeah, yeah. so we have some comments I want to catch up on before we we dive into um, our slides but um, we have um, Francesca is watching from San Diego 
And uh, Pug Life just wanted to thank you, Alona, for sharing your real mom story. It was very helpful. And um, Samuel, I, I guessing that's your husband. He says, you go, Alona. Um, and then um, the, there was a backup says, ah, <laughs> nice to see a homeschool dad on. And then um, Francesca also noted, she said, my biggest um, homeschool struggles organization since I have an ADHD diagnosis. You know, we talked about this as parents, we oftentimes, most of the time, have the same diagnoses as our kids. And that makes homeschooling difficult, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. But she says, but thanks to great resources like this channel, my nine Old son with an autism diagnosis is doing great. That is so awesome to hear. I'm so excited that we're, we can come by you and um, alongside you and help. And yes, I have amazing guests. I learn every week and I learn not to beat myself up, but for the things that I'm learning that I didn't do <laughs> when I was homeschooling my own kids. <laughs> it just, it's the way it is, but I'm glad they're here for you guys. So, um, so yeah, should we dive into um, the slides? Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can find them again. All right, so we were going to focus on tips and advice for planning. And I think um, I'm gonna run by my, my questions here a little bit for you. But um, but I know we, we oftentimes when families look at homeschooling, they ask other homeschoolers, you know, what their homeschooling schedule looks like. And, um, I mean, would you recommend that approach? Why or why not? And what additionally would you suggest they do to start figuring out a good schedule for their family? Um, I think that it's probably almost inevitable that you're going to want to ask other mm -hmm. people what they do. Yeah. And for me, asking, like, if you're going to ask, ask a variety of people. That is a very good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So... Because ultimately, it doesn't really matter what other people are doing. You don't need to base what you're doing off of what others are doing. Mm -hmm. But seeing the multiple perspectives, yes. when, when, yep. mm -hmm. you some, when you're just starting, um, especially for someone, you know, people like me that went to a public school mm -hmm. or their only experience is like a traditional school day. Right. Um, or yep. even worse, if you have a teaching degree. And you really think that it needs to be like that. Um, right. You just have to remember, like, the reason uh, public and even private schools are the, are set up the way they are is because they have so many kids, all mm -hmm. the same age, um, and the expectation is that they're all going to be working on the same thing. Right. And that's yes. part of why we homeschool is because we, we don't think it that works mm -hmm. <laughs> um, right. yep. so we shouldn't model what we're doing after what you're already feeling like isn't working it's isn't working. the best exactly mm -hmm. so. yeah that's a great point to make awesome should i head to the next slide um yeah sure okay so one of the things that well this is kind of like <clears throat> an overview of, okay. of kind of the points that i thought of when it came to making a schedule oh, okay um, yeah so you can ask around and see what some other people are doing just to kind of see because you know maybe they have an idea that you didn't uh think of right um, mm -hmm. and uh what i would recommend is uh trying to do a routine more than a schedule especially oh i love that I yeah love the flip uh-huh exactly so, especially for kids that have um, learning challenges, mm -hmm. a rigid schedule can be very difficult. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, parents who have their own hangups and stuff like that, you know, they might have right. their own attention issues or mm -hmm. their own difficulties with organizing or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So a routine can help you to know what's going to come next. Yes. Mm -hmm. But versus a schedule where it feels very rigid. And right, because there's certain time segments right. and you have to be done by a certain time and start by a certain time. And it, your anxiety level just shoots to the right. At least mine does yeah. um, when I have time periods and I can't keep them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I I know someone had, had recommended us having like a schedule at one point and I tried it and I just felt like a failure every day because I mm. couldn't keep it. It was not, 
it just there's always something to say. Um, yeah. So I have more on each slide, but um, also a multidisciplinary approach where uh, we kind of combine different subjects together. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, which helps you get things done faster. <laughs> we found that highly successful yes. with my kids. <laughs> uh -huh. And I, I think they learn better. That mm -hmm. way. Um, it's more realistic. It's not like in life right. things are, are separated like that. It's not yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. um, and prioritizing, keeping things that are the top priority first, get those done first, but mm -hmm. don't over plan things. So That's a good point. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I've been... As a teacher, you're told over plan. Uh, because really? You, yeah, you don't want uh, a class. Oh, you don't want empty spots. Got yeah, it. You don't yeah. want your, your <laughs> class because then they'll because it's a behavior management thing. It is. Yeah. You don't want mm -hmm. that at home though. Like, no. At home, you can you have other behavior management things that you can do. Where what I do uh, when I'm thinking straight, <laughs> what I do <laughs> is. Uh, when they don't have a specific task that they need to do mm -hmm. to prevent them from just like, they like to run around. They like mm -hmm. a horse or a lion or a dog or whatever. Uh -huh. And all, all the games, they look the same to me. It's just them running up and down the hallway. <laughs> right. Oh, yes. I remember the days. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> to give them something constructive to do during that time where maybe you have things you need to get done like mm -hmm. that they can't it, it's best if they can help with things like if they're if you're cleaning the house they can help even little mm -hmm. kids but yeah i work from home mm -hmm. full time i they can't help me with that <laughs> right yeah <laughs> so um and, and my husband also works from home too so we're both here but we're mm -hmm. not always able to be doing something with them and that's fine because yeah. they mm -hmm. don't always need something done with them Right. They don't need to be entertained. <laughs> we're, we're not clowns. Our mm -hmm. not <laughs> yeah. um, but they should have some direction on yeah. what is appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we have different things that we kind of default to. They're allowed to color. They're allowed to read. Or if they can't read yet, they can look at books. They still mm -hmm. enjoy looking at pictures. Um, right. They're they are now old enough they can play some simple board games or card games together. Mm -hmm. be great. Um, uh, we have one, maybe my husband remembers the, the name of it. It's the, this little treasure game, but it's really cool because nobody, it's like you're playing against the game. So oh, okay. you're not competing against each other. So yes. no hurt feelings. Right. You're less likely to have a battle ensued when you're, <laughs> you can't mitigate the... Right. <laughs> So um, that they they've been loving that game, um, hmm. or even a cat found her. So anyways, she. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I lost my train of thought. Anyways, they they can do certain activities like independently. Yes, uh, and mm -hmm. and you don't have necessarily that flexibility in a classroom. So that's why. Right. You over plan for a classroom or make mm -hmm. it a co-op class or something like that. At home, right. you under plan because mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. are finished early, then great. We probably won't finish early. <laughs> right. Um, yes. Especially if you have a struggling learner, mm -hmm. you don't want to rush them. I know my... So true. Yes, I love daughter, you point out. Mm -hmm. she, my, my middle daughter just clams up. And she cannot function. Oh, They're rushing her. My right. youngest, we were in a co-op class. It's a Play-Doh art class. They had to build a garden with their Play-Doh. There was a time limit because it's a co-op class. My oh, youngest yeah. daughter, she was just like, I can't. Um, oh. Like She's like, I don't know how. I'm like, what do you mean? You don't know how to play with Play-Doh all of a sudden? <laughs> because there was a time limit on it. And she just, right. it wasn't yeah. coming to her anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um I'll just not mention the time. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, cause you can have it in your mind, but not right. Mm -hmm. so, and yeah. then also taking breaks is oh, a yeah. huge, um, a huge thing because it's so tempting, especially because things probably took longer. 
Mm -hmm. uh, when you want them to. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's it's tempting to just try to move on to the next thing, but um, it's kind of like when you exercise, they say that rest time is just as important as the time you spend exercising mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. you need time for that muscle to heal. It's the same with our brains. So yeah, yeah, I can see mm -hmm. that. That makes a lot. Of, yeah, I learned too with the prioritizing part that sometimes when life crises come apart, you know, happen, that if I had prioritized what things need to get done the most, I could quickly grab those three th top things and say everything else gets shoved to the side. This is what we have to get done today. The rest is just going to float until we can get around to it. Um, so, you know, next month we're going to be talking about illnesses and medical issues and homeschooling through those types of things. That's where those those top three are just so important yes. to always know, you know, yeah, prioritize it. It's And your priorities might look different than another family. Exactly. That's that's a great point, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So don't always say, don't always ask your neighbor, what are your three top priorities? Because yeah. as a parent, I know what three things are most important in my house to be taught. Yeah. And it's going to, it's going to be different from house to house. And even yeah. as they get older. Mm -hmm. like, exactly. So. Yes. Yep. Yeah. True. Anyway. All right. Um, well, let's move on to the next slide, I guess. Okay. Just okay, a little so more that was, we're going to go more in depth with routine and schedule. Awesome. Okay. So one thing you can do is consider planning um, in chunks or blocks rather than subjects. So oh, uh -huh. um, you can say, uh, like, for me, I know how my work day looks. And there are certain times of the day where I have meetings or I have lessons I have to teach for work. So mm -hmm. I'll say there's a chunk of time before I have to start working. And then I have a little chunk of time like where maybe my, my lunch break or something is. And then I have a chunk of time after. And on mm -hmm. each day that could be different because um, you know there's one day a week, sometimes two they have their therapy. Um, mm -hmm. There's Fridays, they have co-op, and so there, it's different each day, but which chunks are available for us. But we know through the, the week, my kids know pretty much by now what we're doing, like the order of things for each day. Uh, so, uh, for instance, I'll usually start with language arts or math because those are, it just depends on how long I have my kids get done their math faster. So if I have a shorter amount of time, I might have them do their math. Um, but they also are more able to do math a little more independently. So sometimes I'll save that for another time of the day where maybe I'm going to be doing other things and like maybe multitasking. Um, okay. So, so that's, that's one way rather than saying, okay, we have to do reading at 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock every day. Like, it may mm -hmm. not work that way. That might not work for you. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, we tried that before, and it was it, it did not work. <laughs> it was too stressful. Well, that, and that's good. We, it's good to know that there are some trial and error in, in this, this process, yes. and you're going to learn, and you're just going to tweak and change as things work and things don't work, and that's okay. Yeah, so there's definitely going to be trial and error. And also, it's going to change as they get older. Because mm -hmm. little kids are going to need a lot more uh, hand-holding through their yes. schoolwork. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. But once they get up to where they are a little bit more independent, and I always encourage like to teach, teach that independence at a young age, mm -hmm. uh, which I get into a little bit later. But, um, you know, so it's going to look different when they're in early elementary versus when they're in high school. Because yes. So what true. they're learning mm -hmm. is different. Like when when they're in high school, you're probably not going over um, spelling words anymore. Right. I mean, and, some, and some, might, some people might be. But, but yes. A lot of people, they've shifted to something else. And mm -hmm. now maybe they 
this is where they're able to focus more on um, like history and things like that. Whereas mm -hmm. when they're little, if if you can at least get them their foundation and, yes. and their mm -hmm. reading and writing and their basic math, that's your priority as, mm -hmm. as like right. little kids. Mm -hmm. Whereas some people nowadays, you have teenagers and toddlers in the same house and yep. trying to balance them. And it can be a little bit more challenging to, to try to um, meet all their needs. Yep. Mm -hmm. So not impossible, but it is challenging. <laughs> yeah. Yes, not impossible. Um, and there's pros and cons to that too, because like mm -hmm. you, yes, you have more diverse needs, but sometimes the older kids can help the younger kids. Exactly, that, that can yep. be beneficial for everybody. Mm -hmm. So as long as you don't like overdo it, like, right? Yeah. They're not the parent, but they can sit with them through a simple lesson or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, Utilize that to make it beneficial for both yeah. students. So, mm -hmm. and, and you do that in the classroom too, where you have the more right. learners working with the, the ones that are struggling a little bit more. Yes. Um, it mm -hmm. just depends on your personal dynamic in your own house. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we yeah. have um, some benefits of being flexible. Um, one is avoiding burnout because that's yes. probably the biggest one. <laughs> Well, especially if you're a person who likes, you know, to to have something new, you know, every once in a while, and you really do not thrive on being always doing the same thing. I'm one of those people. And so if I saw like my whole schedule all week was the same, I'd go, oh, <laughs> but, but yeah, you can kind of change it up a little bit. And again, it's that, that little bit, it doesn't have, everything doesn't have to change. The routine can stay the same, but there, maybe there's something, a pop of something new every day just enough to keep the burnout from happening. <laughs> I, I have found that for us, although we have kind of like our weekly flow and routine, mm -hmm. there's always, there's holiday, there's summer break. Yeah. Like, there's always uh -huh. something that's interrupting it. So mm -hmm. we don't really get tired of it because by the time we really are getting used to it, mm -hmm. we're thrown out of it again and we have to like get back in it and stuff. So. Right. I had actually seen um, on Facebook on a homeschooling group where someone was saying that their 10 year old was having a hard time falling asleep. And hmm. this is a kind of common thing in the, the preteen teenage years yes. where they mm -hmm. they're sort of in rhythm shifts. Exactly. And, um, you know, it starts to to be difficult for them to, to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I was like recommending, you know, just, you know, you got to work with them. To mm -hmm. <laughs> you do. Yeah. Help it, you know? Um, but then someone else had commented on there, like, why are you waking your kids up in the morning? Like, why do you even homeschool? And I thought, well, you know, I do wake my kids up sometimes in the morning mm -hmm. because the things that we do that are also valuable to us, like our co-op or our church and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Or we have animals that they need to be let outside in the morning. You can't wait. You can't sleep until noon. Right. Um, <laughs> so there are some priorities here. Yeah, yeah exactly. So that goes back to the priorities. Like mm -hmm. you have to, you have your priorities, but um, you can still be flexible. Like I don't wake right. my kids up at dawn. And mm -hmm. sometimes if they're they've had a late night, I might let them sleep in a little bit longer. Whereas, right. That goes back to that flexibility. Yes. Yeah, and you do have the, yeah, yeah. Okay. And a lot of times and it's, it's sometimes just not fruitful to try to teach a teenager at, um, at too early in the morning. Cause you're really just going to end up repeating yourself anyways. Right. Well, <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> you know, they do tend to learn better, um, when you're more flexible and in mm -hmm. reality, um, that's kind of the world, you know, yep. like you have mm -hmm. to, if you work somewhere, as I've heard before, like you have to get them used to waking up early and, and having this schedule. That's not how the world is anymore. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> and you know, my kids were on this, like we'll start school at noon schedule and then they got real jobs and they were up at early in the morning. They, they learned to adapt okay. because it demands, life demands it. And if they have a good internal sense of responsibility, 
that's what's most important. They will change their schedule if they know they're responsible for something at a certain time. And um, yeah, it, it very little effects. I know I felt that guilt too. And like, oh my goodness, I'm ruining my children. No, <laughs> I've got 20 some year olds and my, my youngest is 17. They all made that shift perfectly fine. <laughs> I mean, that's just part of life is having to adapt to different things. Like you're probably exactly. not going to have like these days, most people don't have the same job their entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. and 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 jobs, different jobs have different um, different times you have to start. There's night mm-hmm. shift jobs, so you can even if if you find that a certain uh, time works best for you for your body, you mm-hmm. have that ability to to go and find a job that that works for that. And I've exactly. even seen that there's a DNA test that will tell you what time is the best time for your body to wake up. I don't hmm. know if that changes like over the course of your life, because I know there are different like typical sleep patterns of different ages. Right. And I thought that was really interesting because that is interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, we can't necessarily be a morning person. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you're feeling it and you're like, man, getting up at six or seven or even eight in the morning is just like constantly difficult. Mm-hmm. It's okay to move it down an hour or whatever. Try something right. different. So, mm-hmm. and, and you'll find point. like kids tend to learn better when they're awake. Yeah, so. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> I completely so. agree. Yes, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, you say increased learning happens and, yeah. and really more freedom. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, and, and more freedom. And what I mean by that is, for instance, there are certain things that, uh, our church does that are in the evening. Some things are in the morning, some things are in the afternoon. And if they were in a public school, half of that, we wouldn't be able to participate. Mm -hmm. Right. Our church is an hour away. So like, oh yeah. So you got to build in that travel time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're like in this rural area and there's, you know, it's a lot of driving. So mm-hmm. sometimes we get home at midnight or one in the morning and oh, yeah. the next day we're not hopping up at. You know, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. And also for parents who work like me mm-hmm. <laughs> or um, parents who like to travel or they like us. Their job. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw one where a mom wanted to homeschool because she's a traveling nurse. And oh, yeah. Um, she wanted to be able to take her children with her, um, military families a lot of times. And yes. Just a lot of jobs uh, require mm-hmm. traveling, maybe mm-hmm. less nowadays because of all the restrictions and stuff. Yeah, but I know when I travel and speak, my daughter comes with me and it's it's so easy to just have her books and she just yeah. does school while we're going. So, yeah. I, I've taken books with me when I had to get the car's oil change. And instead of, because I, I was a single mom for a little while and mm-hmm. they came everywhere with me. Yeah. I take their books. That was how I kept their behavior. Like, oh. when, when they're buckled in, it, it does help with that. <laughs> well, I mean, we'd be sitting in like the, the, waiting, the waiting area. area yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The only thing that was challenging was there's usually a TV. Oh, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of TV. So, when, like, it'd be like the news. And my kids are like, oh, wow, the news. <laughs> And I'm like, no, focus on your books. <laughs> but even, yeah, a change of environment. I mean, even if you were to take the books to the park and things like that, it it, it does, it ignites something in the brain to, yes. to want to learn more. Yeah. And um, so, so those are great, great, great points. Go yeah. on to the, the next slide. Okay. So multidisciplinary. Yeah. So combining the subjects when you can. Oh, yes. Yep. Okay. I'm going to go back there. You yep. don't have to do every subject every day. That was, major oh, that is a good point. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. We used to do unit studies and maybe half the year we would do history. The other half we would do science. Um, and, and with kids on the spectrum when that don't, you know, shift topics too quickly, it was really good for us because um, it helped us to focus on one subject instead of to, to have one extra or two extra things in the day that we didn't have to shift because shifting is takes so much energy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I have said we have like transition resistance. 
<laughs> like, yes, um, yes. Mm-hmm. Just, just trying to move from one thing to the next is really difficult unless you have, that's where the routine can come in and be helpful where you have like, okay, this is the signal that we're going to be moving to the next thing. That's a good, yes, I've heard people that do that, yes. So, and it doesn't have to be a huge thing. It could be something small. Um, there's lots of different things. I would discourage using food as a signal of transition because mm-hmm. that can give way to like bad eating habits. <laughs> right. We use meal times sometimes, like yeah. lunch. Lunch would be yeah. a transition time. And I did a lot of reading while my kids were sitting and eating and I was reading. <laughs> yeah, that would be a healthy one, but I mean yeah. like candy or but, something. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I've seen people do that. Even I was surprised like when my youngest or my oldest rather was in um, speech therapy when she was little, hmm. um, they would give her a piece of candy like to I was like, why are you doing that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't you know that's mm-hmm. bad for them? So, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I mean, I would give them healthy snacks because it was a long drive. Again, another hour to get there. But, right. um, or they would eat in the car anyway, but they didn't mm-hmm. eat candy. Um, <laughs> yeah. They, they could have something healthy. I do encourage my kids, like, um, you know, they can eat a cucumber or some celery or some carrots, like, Mm-hmm. to have that that tactile uh sensory thing that they right. want and it's it's into something healthy it's not a cookie or something mm-hmm. like that, so yeah, yeah. The, those are some great suge- suggestions love that <laughs> and then um prioritize don't over plan um what else do you have to add to that one i, uh, I love what you already talked about <laughs> the the big thing that i wanted to add to that was the concept of eating the frog in the morning, which is ah, yes, <laughs> this idea <laughs> that, into that you do the things you don't want to do first. Mm-hmm. Um, you do the low dopamine things, the things that aren't exciting. Um, <laughs> my kids, I actually um, don't let them eat breakfast until they've taken care of the animals doesn't take them very long. We used to do that too when we lived on a farm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, because why should you be eating when the animals didn't get to eat yet and Mm -hmm. they have to wait for you? And also I have found very consistently once they eat breakfast, they do not want to move. They don't want to do it, which is Uh because your body's digesting. So Right, exactly. It's using that energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and and that's fine and that's normal, Mm -hmm. but... um, you just have to make sure you're uh, putting things in that order, the, the right. proper order of things. Um, so uh, it's also uh, good to just have like the fun things. These are fun things last um, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. once you've done something fun, you don't want to do something hard or something boring after that. Yes. Um, yep. So that goes for screen time. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, my kids don't get like some days they don't get any screen time at all uh, and and that's okay too um mm-hmm. yeah because that's a very very high dopamine activity you right. get a lot of dopamine from looking at a screen even mm-hmm. something boring like the news is still very high dopamine right and, uh, um, that's a great point so they have to do their schoolwork first if if every once in a while i'll let them watch a movie or something like in the evening if everything else is done the, the house is clean the um like just everything their, their school work's done they've been behaving it's like a reward so um but yeah that that's mm-hmm. been really um and that's for me too like i i can't uh i feel like i can't function well if i do like the if i eat if I eat candy in the morning, <laughs> then I don't want to do anything all day. It makes me just like sluggish. So yep. you have sugar crashes and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I got a, we have a question from a viewer that's kind of related to this. I'm going to put it up on the screen, but Jennifer is watching on YouTube asks, um, I'll be working five days a week on site and be ready to homeschool at three 30, but he, he's not homeschooled early and um, then he's overstimulated by a late day. Um, I didn't get the rest of it, but probably how can she homeschool? Um, 
I can't see the rest. I'm having some trouble with some of our questions, but um, so how would you address that? Um, working yourself, you know, this, the, the schedule is going to dictate um, that maybe her son is going to be doing school during some of that time. What, what are some things that she can do? That's something that happens in our house a lot. <laughs> mm. uh, 3.30 is about when I'm finishing up most of my work. And I have found one, you want to make sure that while you're working, you're not watching TV and, and doing stuff like that, which is hard because you're not there. But you right. can tell like whoever's watching them, like they can't eat a bunch of sugar <laughs> which they shouldn't be doing anyway. Right. Um, that's just, you know, for anybody. And then, you know, you don't really want them having screen time until after they've done their schoolwork. Um, if they can do something physical during that time, because usually I tell oh, my yeah. kids, go mm -hmm. do your chores while I'm working. Um, and then they can read uh, mm -hmm. or even just look at books for my littler ones. And they can do things that aren't as stimulating mm -hmm. until that time. And also, like, if I don't know what what their setup is, like, if they are taking their child to, like, a daycare or if they're watched at home. But mm -hmm. if they're wa being watched at home, like, don't wake them up. Just let them sleep longer. Let's say yes. a yep. amount of time. Mm -hmm. And then they won't be so overtired when you get home. Right. Um, 3.30 is a hard time to start doing school because naturally most of our bodies are getting tired at that time. Mm -hmm. So you have to be extra patient and just understand like you're going to be tired because you just worked all day. Right. It's exactly. going to be tired. Um, I like to do the, um, the exercises, our, our brain integration exercises first because mm -hmm. it gets your, your blood flowing and stuff. Yeah, that's a good and, point. And their brain mm -hmm. working. It's like a warm up for us. So that helps us a lot as well. Um, mm -hmm. So those, yeah. those are those some are... some of the tips I would say for that. Yeah. Yep. And then um, we had just a couple other comments. Pug Life said, thank you for letting me know that starting a school day at 11 a.m. doesn't set my child up for a poor work ethic. <laughs> that is, it, it is true. Just <laughs> believe us. And she said, my big plan is, of course, maintaining a real job someday with, as we want for all our kids. Um, nature walks, drawing, silent reading, um, free learning worksheets. Um, yeah, those are those are all great for getting that brain going. Um, and so, yeah, um, I know we're, we're about down to eight minutes and I want to make sure we, we get through the rest of your content. So I'm going to, should I go yeah. on to the next slide? Yeah. Okay. And then taking this breaks. This one's pretty yep. much pretty simple. You take breaks because, um, you know, your brain needs a break. And if you mm -hmm. can get them to do something active during our break, that's great. But maybe your exactly. kid just needs like to do deep breathing or something like that mm -hmm. um, to calm down. It depends how the child is. I know sometimes we do like a higher energy thing and then a lower energy thing, and then mm -hmm. we go back into our score. So that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good yeah, suggestions. Yeah. And they say that after, after some physical activity that the brain actually will focus mm -hmm. better. And um, for, and for little kids, it's <laughs> We try to give them 20 minute assignments, their brain focuses for about five. <laughs> so so don't push it. <laughs> attention is a is a learned skill. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. don't realize that yes. like they they feel like, oh no, my five year old can only pay attention for like four or five minutes. That's normal. Yeah. <laughs> Thank That's you for saying that. Normal. Yes, that so, is so true. Mm -hmm. So don't don't jump the gun and think there's like attention problems right off the bat. You know, sometimes it's just developmentally normal we usually say about one minute per year old they are is mm, how long mm -hmm. their attention is so for an adult max is 45 minutes like that's wow. the maximum you get and mm. most of the time we do our lessons are like an hour so it's right. like, why are we doing it like this uh-huh so i like to do it with my kids together that's on the next slide actually um, okay yep. with the, the strategies that. for how to um to get get it done uh, mm -hmm. faster. A big part of like your scheduling is, well, your goal is to get it done. <laughs> and, right, exactly. <laughs> the faster you can get it done, 
and effectively done, mm -hmm. that, the better. So I am always a big proponent of having siblings helping. Yes. Um, because mm -hmm. not, and it's, and I originally had said older kids can help, but then I said, no, sometimes the younger kids are yes. helping older kids. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's reversed, especially when you have your older kids struggling. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes even your older struggling kids can still help younger kids. So exactly. it's just, it, and it could be, you, you don't even know how it's going to play out until it's happening. Right. Well, <laughs> and as, as you study your kids, you know their strengths. Yeah. And you know one's strengths and one's weakness and how you compare them up to help each other. And, and it's good for them to understand that, you know, yeah, we all struggle and we all have strengths and this is how we can work together better. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. sometimes siblings clash and it doesn't work. Um, exactly. You know, or you teach them to be better friends uh, through yeah. the, <laughs> the chaos. You, know, you do what works for you. And also always like this quote here, it says the greatest gifts you can give your children are the roots of responsibility and the wings of independence. And mm -hmm. really, that's our goal as parents is to raise our kids not to be kids, but to be productive adults. Exactly. And um, so teaching them independence, especially in their schoolwork, it's going to make it easier for you. It's going to make it easier for them. So mm -hmm. even with my my kids in at preschool level, they're following along as I read the directions and I always am saying read the directions first so yeah. we get in the habit of reading the directions and mm. even now my 10 year old she knows she's got to read the now that she can actually read she did actually learn how to read um and despite my fears that it would never happen would never happen. <laughs> and, uh, she she just learned a little bit later but um, mm -hmm. she's not necessarily the strongest reader but she can she can read and she reads the directions first and i'm like oh, yes that's awesome she's reading yeah. directions yeah <laughs> And it, it, it's amazing just how, you know, you, you think you're just repeating yourself and repeating yourself and all of a sudden <laughs> it becomes, and you are, but all of a sudden your kids go, oh, this is the way we do things. And then all of a sudden one day you just find you're not repeating yourself anymore. <laughs> and you're like, oh, <laughs> we're getting this. There's always something new, but you know, the thing that you had been saying over and over again does get integrated. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Start by giving them small tasks that they can do successfully by mm -hmm. themselves. So that could be right. copy work, which I yeah. never wanted my kids to do copy work because I thought how boring. But then I realized they need that. Yes. Because their, their handwriting is horrible and they mm -hmm. just needed that extra practice. And, right. Um, Working on those um, muscles. and yeah, yeah, they need to mm -hmm. work those muscles. And, uh, you know, so you can also have them work independently on something that they can do while you work more closely with another kid. And it kind of forces them to be like, okay, I do have to do some of this by myself. So, right. and my mm -hmm. kids get super excited now when they can do things. Like at first it was like blinking. They're like, no, we want you to help. But now mm -hmm. they're like, look, I can do it by myself. Oh, yes. And, and that's, that's a sense of accomplishment. We want them to feel that and know definitely. they can do that. Definitely. So. Awesome. All right, and then you got a few quotes here. Um, hmm. About being flexible, bless you the flexible for they will not be bent out of shape, which is <laughs> kind of right? you know, That's great, I love that. Uh, you know, it can be stressful to be flexible. Yes. And this one says, be stubborn about your goals and flexible about your methods. So hmm. we all have this, this so goal of raising productive adults, but mm -hmm. we have to be flexible about how we go about it. Yeah. And if plan A didn't work, the alphabet has 25 more <laughs> that we can stay in. So uh, there's only, good. It, it's tempting to just right. up and be frustrated and say there's no other way to do this. There's, there's infinite ways to exactly so yes, so yeah. true. I love that. And then people can connect with you at <laughs> it's uh, Pillars of Peace Primary Park. Dot com. So we are um, a homeschool hybrid. We do everything online. Uh, we do the brain integration therapy exercises and also do some specific strategies to help the struggling learners and just help the, the kids feel more accountable to listen to their parents. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and it's great to just as a parent, especially, you know, if you feel like you need that extra support, don't feel down on yourself. Some, you know, it, it's it's OK. There, there are resources out there. That's why we exist to help you find them. And we're excited about uh, Alona's um, new um, endeavor because. This, this is something we haven't seen before. And I know it's something that a lot of families could use, you know, this this virtual hybrid approach to, to just helping you with with that flexibility yet the routine that that you need and some and some help alongside with just helping to teach your kids. So that's um, that's exciting. So so definitely check out her her website at Pillars of Peace Primary Partners. And Alona, thank you so much for all you've had to share. This has been such a fun hour. Um, We've had lots of comments and along the way, and I'm I'm thinking I missed some because I can't even scroll down on my feed right now and to see if I missed anything. I super apologize if I did not respond to your um, to anything that you commented on, and so um, hopefully we'll um, be able to to work that that out. But um, like I said, I'm traveling too, and that might be part of the issue. Um, but. But anyways, um, we will hope that we've encouraged you and um, and helped you to see that uh, how many just different things that you have the ability to do with your schedule. So mm-hmm. so thank you so much, Alona, for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, I know it's a lot <laughs> working and and teaching your own kids. You know, you're running your own business. And um, but thank you for being encouragement to our community today and just for the work that you're doing. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. I want to appreciate it, and I just want all of you to to um, to check out her website too, and um, and see if um, that might be a good fit for your family. If you're kind of thinking about um, what might be coming up in the next year, and Pug's Life said, um, so thank you. I'm seeing that comment. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is our last broadcast um, this month where we're focusing on um, school choice. Next month, we're going to be focusing on medical issues, and we're going to dive into um, a plethora of medical issues all at the same time. My, my guest That'll be on next week um, is Terry McKee, and she um, not only has kids with medical issues, but a husband with medical issues and herself as well, and just how she navigates homeschooling. We're just going to be sharing some stories, some um, personal insights on on how to do that. And I know we deal with illnesses, sometimes maybe more um, long-term chronic, um, and with all the things going on in our world, we deal with a lot of illnesses that are short-term too. So, um, so definitely want to join us um, and we'll be on at the same time um, next week. Um, Samuel, give you a thumbs up, Alona. <laughs> so, um, but, um, but yeah, so, so join us next week, same time, same place. Uh, we'll be here on Facebook and YouTube as well. And um, we hope to, to see you then. So, um, so thanks everybody. And um, check out our website again at spedhomeschool.com and um, that's where you'll and also Alona's website as well and um, we'll see you next week right here on Empowering Homeschool Conversations. Bye everybody. God kept calling my heart. Like, I just knew he was my safe place. I hope people don't walk away going, wow, you're really awesome. More than like, wow, Jesus is really interesting. And he's really awesome. Everybody on this planet is dealing with some sort of what if. How does that one courageous decision affect the whole world? A ship in harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. If you were encouraged by what you just heard, please search Trevor Talks on your favorite podcast platform or lifeaudio.com.